the Nuclear Accident Liability Bill. It wants India to use its government rulemaking procedures, that is, set rules in a way, so that the U.S. commercial interests are shielded. In other words, even though the bill has certain clauses in it in terms of supply liability, it wants the rules to be framed in such a manner that the suppliers have a lot more leeway. Third, and I think it's important to remember that both sides, it's not the, just the United States, India too, oversold this nuclear deal. Now the chickens have come home to roost both for the US and for India. The Americans expected this deal to open up thousands of jobs, to, to get tens of billions of dollars worth of nuclear business in India. The Indians thought that this will be a transformative deal. The fact is that this deal was important, but it hasn't proven to be such a was transformative it, event. Was it oversold? Ambassador I Sen, you are whole, instrumental. I think it's a whole, I think with our obsession with focusing on, on just the United States and not seeing it as a decision, as I said, of 46 countries. Wouldn't have happened this without is, the United States. No, honestly, but look, I mean, our focus is so, so obsessively on the United States. And of course, Dr. Chelani has his views. He is known. He has always been consistent in his views. He has been a consistent opponent. But in the first part, you said that's a strategic reality. It's no. not about 46 countries. It's about the United no, States no. taking up 50% of the space. Sorry, it was at the last moment that people, Bush rang up, let's say, Hu Jintao and said, do me a favor. He rang up the New Zealand Prime Minister. He, they have expended huge capability. That Num favor is now two. being undermined by no. these new restrictions. Sorry, what I'm saying is this is not you cannot, you are assuming that it's a US initiative which all the rest followed, whether at the G8 and at the uh, NSG, 46 member NSG. No, but are you concerned that because of these new restrictions, the whole deal could be undermined and could prove Look, pointless? Look, a lot of it, it is rhetoric and, you know, what we are seeing is a lot of froth. Let's get down to the basic tracks. India it was one of the few countries in the world, one of the six or seven countries, one of the six countries in the world to have complete nuclear fuel cycle activities. We have enrichment and we have reprocessing. So what you're talking about is hypothetical. Is and it hypothetical, story? the concerns? Of course not. Of course not. First, um, look, you know, the first nuclear power plant under the zeal will not come online at least a decade from now. So the people are asking, what are the energy benefits of this deal? And this deal was more, more, more about strategic bonding between the two countries. So it was not so much just a nuclear deal. Now, for example, look at the new arms relationship between the United States and India. Quietly, dramatically, in the last three years, if you look at the figures in terms of arms purchases by India, the United States has emerged as the single largest seller of arms to India, buying defense weapons from the United States was very much part and parcel of this overall attempt to transform the relationship with the nuclear deal being the centerpiece. So the Americans have got important contracts in, in the arms area. They have managed to develop closer st strategic bonds with India. But in the nuclear business, the deal has not really come, you know, in, has not really realized its full potential. Okay, I'm out of time. I see Ambassador Sen wants to make some final comments and Saurabh Shukla as well. Ambassador, One to you first. First point, and I think this was made by Dr. Shilani, and I want to reaffirm that. We are talking about the United States. What he pointed out rightly, what we have not, it has not been emphasized enough, that no country, when you're talking of U.S. business interests, you have to know that there are two major companies there. One is Westinghouse, which is 100% a subsidiary of Toshiba. Mm -hmm. And other is General Electric, in which the substantial shares are owned by uh, uh, Hitachi. So, so when you are talking about U.S. business interests, we keep that in mind. Second aspect, which is there, that no country, and he's highlighted this, which is very very important, really, whether it's Russia, France, or any other country, they cannot because there has been global integration. Okay. So no country can make these supplies. So have a, this sense of perspective also. All right. Sort of very quickly, I've got some breaking news coming in. So very quickly, they're, please. They're using it as a bargaining chip to extract more defense deeds. And that's what she's... All right. We're just well. getting yeah. some breaking news that an intruder has in fact gate crashed into Rupert Murdoch and James Murdoch's 
uh, hearing before the UK parliamentary panel. We'll be going across live to London just a moment from now. But for the moment, I want to thank Ambassador Ronan Sen, Abhishek Manusinghvi, Brahma Chelani and Professor Sumit Ganguly for joining us.